All right, this is uh, Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar, and we are moving on to uh, part three. It should be part three in a three-part series on um, identifying acute coronary syndromes on the 12-lead ECG. So, we, uh, we know what coronary arteries are, the right coronary artery versus the left coronary artery, uh, generally what areas of the walls they perfuse, um, what structures are involved, um, and we also know that the three cardinal findings of uh, specific acute coronary syndromes, uh, specifically ST depression, ST elevation, and pathological Q waves. So now what we need to do is when we find these things on a 12 lead, how do we figure out um, where it is and what's going on? Um, electrocardiographically, of course, um, again, this is a, a one assessment uh, but we have to assess the patient as a whole, and we have to take into consideration the clinical condition as well. And only when we marry the clinical presentation to what we see on the ECG and, and other um, assorted tests, uh, cardiac enzymes, and so on and so forth, it's only when we marry all that information together do we get a complete picture and can, and can we make a, a more complete statement about what's going on. Okay, so here I have... Uh, a, Pretty standard example of a 12 lead, something you'll see in a hospital. And this is generally how the leads are arranged. Um, at the top of the 12 lead, you'll have the name, date, patient. It'll give you some data about the, um, the QRS axis, the QT interval. It generally gives you all of you know, your PR interval, your QT interval, um, uh, and, and other assorted information um, there at the top. Uh, date, time, etc. And generally what will happen is you'll have your 12 leads and they'll be arranged generally in this kind of order. Uh, you'll start at lead 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, all 12 leads. And then a lot of uh, the 12 leads at the very bottom underneath all the 12 leads, it'll give you a long rhythm strip. Uh, you. Now, a lot of your monitors, you can choose whatever you want the strip to be. Often you'll see uh, something like lead 1 or lead 2. In this case, I just put lead 2. Okay, so we have ST elevation somewhere, and, and we need to identify, first of all, what, what's significant. And we talk about the identification of an ST elevation MI. The significant findings are going to be um, more greater than 2 millimeters. So maybe I'll just put this down here two millimeters or more of elevation in one lead, okay? So if I have two or more millimeters of ST elevation in one lead, that's significant for a STEMI. Or um, one millimeter or more in two or more contiguous leads. And we'll talk about what I mean by to contiguous. Um, or if I have signs and symptoms uh, that are suggestive of an acute coronary syndrome and a new onset, or presumably new onset, left bundle branch block. Again, a bundle branch block can masquerade as ST elevation. And that can really complicate the picture. So if I have a patient that has signs and symptoms that are consistent with an acute coronary syndrome, and I look on their ECG, and they have a left bundle branch block, and we think it's new, or maybe we look at an old ECG and they didn't have it, and now they do, it's presumably new, we have to assume um, that they're having um, an acute coronary syndrome. Okay, so that's, that's the significant findings. How do we make sense of what leads are looking at what area of the heart? And what I always, what I always remember is something called um, I see all leads. Okay, I just think that whenever I see a 12 lead, and that's exactly how I look at my leads. So I start off with I, and that's the inferior, the inferior wall. So, what coronary artery are we talking about in this case? Well, we're talking about the right coronary artery, talking about the inferior wall of the left ventricle, we're talking about the SA node, the AV node, uh, we're talking about the right ventricle 
in 30 to 50 percent of all inferior wall MIs, um, you can expect to have a right ventricular infarction occurring and we can do a special test called a V4R, which is something maybe I'll talk about a little later on to identify an infarcting right ventricle. Okay, I, inferior wall. The leads that we look at for the inferior wall, and these are always the leads I look at first, are leads two, three, and augmented vector front, AVF. So, two, three, and AVF. So we'll just go ahead and draw, and what I'll do is I'll just put inferior wall, okay? All right, and then I move on to C, and that is the septal wall, and the septal wall is supplied by the left quarter artery, specifically the um, anterior descending, or the left anterior descending branch off of the left corner artery. The septal wall is going to be the uh, LCA, the left corner artery, specifically the LAD branch of that, okay? And that is gonna be represented by leads V1 and V2, okay? So V1 and V2 right here, and I'll just put septal, Okay, that's a septal wall there. And then I move on to all, and that is the anterior wall that is also supplied by the left quarter artery and the left anterior descending branch. And it should come as no surprise that the anterior septal wall, uh, in a lot of cases, gets both walls get taken out. Um, because it involves the same circulation. Um, that is going to be represented by V3 uh, and V4, and that will also be the left corner artery and the left anterior descending. So V3 here and V4 will be the anterior, the anterior, okay, and then L, leads is going to be the lateral wall of the left ventricle and that will be V5, V6, 1 and augmented vector left, AVL. And this is the left corner artery or specifically the circumflex, the circumflex branch off of the left corner artery that kind of wraps around the lateral wall of the heart and then goes to the, the posterior aspect. So V5, V6, 1, and AVL. And what we'll do is we'll just draw lateral here and then lateral here as well. AVR, uh, we generally don't use it. It doesn't really look at anything specifically. Um, so as a general rule, we can kind of forget about AVR and just look at those leads. Okay, so I see all leads. Inferior 2, 3, AVF. C, uh, septal, V1 and V2. All anterior, V3 and V4. Leads, lateral wall, V5, V6, 1, and AVL. And hopefully you guys find that helpful. Um, and thanks for sticking in there. Take care, everyone.